circulatory movement was possible. The tunica was not deflated before 30 minutes and was not inflated for more than one hour. At the end of surgery, the tunica deflation was performed by the cyclic deflation and reinflation uh, technique. Quality of block. Assessment of quality uh, was uh, um, assessed by grading described by Weyer RJ. It was divided into excellent, good, fair, and poor quality. Assessment of post-op pain by visual analog scale from 0 to 10. 0 is no pain, 10 is worse pain. Post-operatively, patients were instructed to receive 75 mg diclofenac IM when VAS was more than, four, more than 4. Assessment of sedation by Ramsey sedation scale from grade 1 to grade 6. 1 is anxious uh, and 6 is no response. Stats. stats. Student T-tests were used for comparison of data, which are commonly expected to be normal distributed, such as demographic, intra-op, post-op hemodynamic data, time, of the onset of sensory and motor block and duration of the operation. Men Whitney U test was used for intra-op and post-op VAS and sedation score and the quality of anesthesia. Significance level was assumed as uh, P is less than 0 0.05 and stats analysis were performed by SPSS version 17. These are the demographic uh, data which shows the age, gender and weight as comparable as they are not significant and unique time was more in group B which is significant. Dura this is the table showing duration of surgery and motor block. It is clearly seen that the in group B, which received dexmedotomy in one microgram, uh, the duration of sensory and motor block, uh, onset of sensory and motor block is highly significant and it is shorter as compared to group A. And duration of analgesia is highly significant and it is prolonged in group B. This is the changes in visual analog, uh, analog, uh, analog scale, which shows that during first and second hour, there is, little, uh, there is no complaint of pain, while in th on third hour, in group A, which receives dexmedotomidin, 0.5 microgram, shows the VAS scale is increasing, while in group B, it is low. And it continues uh, uh, up to six hours. Changes of sedation score over post-op uh, period, it is clearly seen that uh, within 30 minutes, there is no changes in group A and group B. Uh, within one hour, in group A, its score is one, while in group B, its score is two. Uh, the quality of block, it is clearly showing in the uh, table showing here that the excellent, uh, excellent block was uh, seen in both, uh, type, both uh, groups. While there is a decree, a poor or fair are very much less. Complications, there are few complications are seen in my study. Dry mouth, bradycardia seen in group B, tinnitus in, one, uh, in group B, perioral numbness uh, is not seen. Discussion, this study demonstrated that the demographic data and surgical characteristics were similar in each group. Sensory and motor block onset time is significantly shorter in group with dexmedotomy median one microgram. Duration of analgesia is significantly higher in one microgram, that is group B. Significantly decreased post-op VAS score in group B as compared to group A were found. Jekyllo et al. also demonstrated the analgesic efficacy of dexmedotomidine in human tonicate pain. In their study, a single IV dose of fentanyl and dexmedotomidine was administered, and they found that the analgesic effect of tunicate test with 0.5 microgram dexmedotomidine and more side effects with one microgram. Memes et al. also found 0.5 microgram per kg dexmedotomidine to lidocaine for IVRA to improve quality of anesthesia and intra-op uh, intra and post-op analgesia without causing any side effects. Swami et al. also found significant increase in duration of analgesia on addition of dexmedotomidine to bupivacaine 0.25 in regional block. Limitation of my studies, small study group, pediatric population was not involved. Uh, to conclude the topic, the addition of dexmedotomidine of 1 microgram per kg to lignocaine for uh, IVRA shows significantly better improvement in quality of anesthesia and post-op analgesia as compared to 0.5 microgram per kg dose without causing any significant side effect. These are my references. Thank you.
sir, it takes as adjuvant and it will enhance the post of ceritexone uh, 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 sensory ner uh, nerves, uh, spinal cord nerve roots. It acts like analgesic over there. It acts perineurally when we give in along with blood, then the nerves around its blood vessel, they will absorb the dexmedetomidine and dexmedetomidine would act over there. It's okay. peripheral nerve roots. Thank you. of interventions in sacroiliac joint syndrome. First, a short introduction. Sacroiliac joints are formed by the connection of the sacrum and the right and left iliac bones. It is the largest axial joint in the body with an average surface area of about 17.5 centimeters square. Uh, relatively, there is less motion at this joint, normally less than four degrees rotation, and it supports the entire weight of the upper body when erect, uh, and it places a large amount of stress. It is a synovial joint between sacrum and ileum. Articulating surfaces are flat in infants and irregular in adults. Irregularities contribute to the strength of the joint in transmitting weight from the spine to the lower limbs. The uh, ligaments are uh, anterior sacroiliac ligament, interosseous sacroiliac, posterior sacroiliac, sacrotuberous, and sacrospinous. Uh, we are more concerned for the nerve supply. Uh, it receives innervation from the ventral rami of L4 and L5, the superior gluteal nerve, and the dorsal rami of L5, S1, and S2. Uh, SI joint pain, it has various terms, SI joint dysfunction, SI joint syndrome, strain, or inflammation. Causes uh, are either degenerative arthritis, pregnancy, any walking disorders, or any, uh, any <coughs> disorders which cause inflammation of the SI joint. Symptoms is, are typically the patient will complain of gluteal pain, groin pain, low back pain, or leg pain. Unilateral pain is more common than bilateral. Diagnosis, as we all know, pain is the key. The patient will complain of dull, aching, sharp, or stabbing pain. Um, here are some aggravating factors. This is the distribution of the pain. And the uh, pain provocation tests, we have the Fortin's test, we have the distraction test, compression test, Faber's test, which is the most uh, widely used. Uh, it, is a, it is technically challenging to differentiate low back pain due to SI joint from other sources. The protocol is uh, history, physical examination, radiological findings, provocative techniques, and diagnostic blocks. This is imaging in the SI joint syndrome. It's not very clear, but the joint is fully fused, fibrosed. This is scintigraphy in SI joint syndrome. Now, the aim of my study was to assess the role of controlled blocks in patients suffering from SI joint dysfunction. Uh, we, uh, we also checked the total number of diagnostic come therapeutic blocks that were required. Uh, 52 patients of either sex with chronic low back pain with positive signs or symptoms of SI joint syndrome were included in my study, which was uh, carried out for six months. Uh, the clinical criteria used was positive history, uh, patients who met physical examination criteria, and plus who failed to improve clinically even after four weeks of conservative treatment. We used this as a conservative treatment, ice and rest, uh, NSAIDs, supportive brace to correct the asymmetry, strengthening exercises. And still, if it was severe and resistant, then we went on to the SI joint injections. Exclusion criteria were local infection, deranged coagulation profile, patient refusal, local malignancy, and tumors. After accurate diagnosis was made, a uh, controlled SI joint block was given, informed consent was taken, uh, the local infiltration was done, the patients were sedated, mildly sedated, and uh, we, uses, uh, we used a fluoroscopic guidance. This is the, uh, 
This is the image after we had injected dye. Basically, we uh, place the position, uh, the patient in a prone position, placing a, a pillow under the abdomen. And uh, under fluoroscopic guidance, first we injected the dye. We il uh, eliminated the joint. And after that, we had given about 2 to 3 ml of 0.5% bibliocaine. And we had used a steroid injection. We had used triamcinolone, 40 milligrams. This is the placement of the needle. Observation out of 52 patients, 32 patients had more than 75% pain relief. After two injections given consequently, we had kept about seven to 10 days uh, difference between two injections. We had, after the first injection, we had told uh, the patient to come back after seven to 10 days. 18 patients complain of recurrence of pain even after uh, the second injection and hence were referred for radio frequency denervation at other center. Basically, we don't have uh, radio frequency at present at our center. Two patients were lost as they didn't return for follow up. The outcome was measured on the basis of reduction of VAR score by more than 50% for at least six months, improvement in quality of life, reduction in use of medications. Um, the result was the, uh, the reduction in VAR score was more than 50% in 61% of my patients who received diagnostic come therapeutic blocks. 35 patients complain of recurrence of pain even after the second block. So radio frequency denervation was advised from other center and 4% four patient, four patients were lost. Uh, my conclusion is SI joint syndrome is a putative pain generator and can be labeled as a source of low back pain through controlled diagnostic blocks. It is best diagnosed by intraarticular injection of affected SI joint. So basically from the first, uh, the first injection, we found out that that was the best method. However, therapeutic blocks, that is after the second block, it, uh, it was not enough for complete pain relief in all the patients, and thus more advanced modalities like uh, radio frequency denervation, pulsed radio frequency denervation should be sought for for these patients. Uh, these were my references. Thank you. Uh, Ma'am, a local anesthetic. We had uh, Ma'am, 0.5 percent vipro for pain. Uh, Ma'am, three ml, three to four ml, plus. Yes, ma'am, plain before. And uh, plus we had uh, given uh, 40 milligrams triamcinolone steroid. In the local anesthetic? Ma'am, first we gave the local anesthetic. After that, we gave the steroid in, in the same place. Um, ma'am, actually, we called the patient, like I said. We had called the patient after about <coughs> 7 to 10 days. Most of the patients still complain of, uh, they just said that, uh, there was relief for about one or two days, reduction in the VAR score. But then after that, the pain was was still there. So after the second injection, they had a lot of relief. So separately, first lignocaine, then we get the steroid. Try and see. Thank you, sir. Good evening, judges and everyone present in the hall. I'm Dr. Priyanka Dev from Negrims, Shillong. Uh, the topic of discussion today is low back pain, evaluation of intraarticular injection of platelet-rich plasma in the management of chronic low back pain due to sacroiliac joint dysfunction. Uh, low back pain is one of the most prevalent condition that affects people irrespective of sex, age, or re region. Sacroiliac joint dysfunction appears to be one of the most frequent source of pain in about 10 to 25 percent of patients with low back problems. Sacroiliac joint pain disables a person not only physically but also mentally as their deterioration in work performance occurs. <laughs> the aim is uh, I had compared intraarticular injection of platelet rich plasma with intraarticular injection of steroid in the management of chronic low back pain due to sacroiliac joint dysfunction. 
as we all know, the axial spine rests on the sacrum. On either side of the sacrum, it is attached to the two iliac veins. The arrangement leads to three joints, anteriorly the pubic symphysis and posteriorly the left and the right sacroiliac joints. Its function, uh, the function of sacroiliac joint is mainly to transmit or dissipate the loading of the upper part of the body to the lower extremities, as well as it acts as a shock absorber. Platelet-rich plasma, it is obtained by centrifugation of the whole blood and it is, it is the plasma part that is rich in platelets. So in platelet-rich plasma injection, the platelet con concentration is increased three to five times that of the normal blood. When the platelet concentration is increased in a specific area, it stimulates rapid healing by causing connective tissue repair. So in platelet-rich plasma, the platelet to RBC ratio is <coughs> essentially reversed with 94% of the cell matter being platelets and 5% being RBC. Platelets contain alpha and the dense granules. The alpha granules of platelet contain the clotting factor and the growth factors that are responsible for healing process. These granules, when degrade, they release the growth factors which stimulate the inflammatory cascade as well as healing. In platelet-rich plasma injection, we use autologous blood. So, immunogenic reactions or disease transfers are negated. And also the activated growth factors attached to the cell surface, uh, not on the nucleus. So the chances of tumor formation is also eliminated. The study was a hospital-based randomized prospective observational study. The inclusion criteria were chronic low back pain with sacroiliac joint dysfunction. Age was more than 18 years and it included both the sexes. These are the list of uh, exclusion criteria. Patients were selected after an array of clinical tests, referred pain pattern, x-ray of the LS spine with bilateral sacroiliac joints, blood tests, and positive response to fluoroscopy guided diagnostic test. The patients with positive diagnostic tests were included in the study and were grouped into two groups. Group A, which received platelet-rich plasma, contained 25 patients, and group B, uh, received steroids and it was also contained 25 patients. The pre-procedure numeric rating scale was assessed and recorded for each patient. And post-procedure, again the NRS was evaluated at 24 hours, one month, three month, and six months. Tablet paracetamol, 10 to 20 mg per kg in three divided doses were given for the initial seven days and thereafter uh, SOS. Observation. The 95% confidence interval was assessed between the two groups by comparing the non-parametric data using Mann-Whitney U-test for statistical analysis. Probability of less than 0.05 was considered significant. So now when compare, uh, the comparison of the NRS score between both the groups before the procedure was comparable. Also, 24 hours post-procedure was also found to be comparable. But one month after the procedure, there was found to be a significant decrease in the NRS score in group B people, those who received steroids. Then again, on the third month, as well as on the sixth month, this showed a significant decrease in the NRS score in patients receiving platelet-rich plasma. So the study, it included 50 patients aged more than 18 years of either sexes. The distribution between sex, age, and BMI between both the groups were found to be insignificant and did not affect the study. However, in group A, in first month, third month, and six months post-procedure, there was 100%, 88%, and 76% of patients, respectively, obtained significant pain relief after a single injection of PRP. In contrast, people in group B who received intraarticular steroid injection had only a short-term pain relief. At three and six months post-procedure, only 20% and 28% of patients respectively obtained significant pain relief. Uh, so to conclude, platelet-rich plasma provides a significant long-term pain relief after a single injection in patients with sacroiliac joint pain. However, more studies are required to prove its efficacy. The limiting factors of this study was there has to be a proper counseling of the patients as the analgesic effect of the platelet-rich plasma would take some time. And motivation was very important for, because there were no, not much studies 
to prove its efficacy. So in order to reduce its dropouts, we have to motivate the patient to undergo this procedure. These are my references. Thank you. Ma'am, uh, platelets, they contain this alpha granules. Alpha granules contain the growth factors. So, Ma'am, uh, when the platelets are uh, injected, plasma containing more amount of platelets are injected at a particular site. Ma'am, the growth factors are released. These growth factors, they go and attach to the specific cells. And then they lead to healing, and as such, they lead to connective tissue. The connective tissue repair is my target of PRP. So they will stimulate the development of connective tissue. Ma'am, once the connective tissues are formed, then after some time, the connective tissues, once they have formed, they shrink. Once they shrink, they, be, they make the joint tight. As such, they reduce the pain in sacroiliac joint dysfunction. Yes, no, ma'am. It's a one-day procedure. No, no. Yes, ma'am? Uh, Effect to come. Ma yes, ma'am. It takes time. That is why the uh, counseling of the patients is very important. I usually tell them that I will be giving you injection, but do not expect that you will get immediate relief. But you will take some time to get your exact amount of relief that you are expecting from the injection. So it may take around 20 to 25 days, the duration. It takes patient to patient, it changes. So I tell them, at least for a month, you may have some amount of pain. So during that period, I will be giving them any other analgesic, like paracetamol I have been giving them. No, ma'am, the same day. I call the patients the morning. Then I'm. Uh, yes, yes, ma'am. They process it and they give me immediately. What kept you thinking about it? Yes, ma'am. Are there previous drugs? Yes, ma'am. Uh, PRP, though it was not uh, used in sacroiliac joint or the axial joint, it has been used in cardiac surgeries for the past uh, around two decades. It has been used in cardiac surgeries in um, ACL tear patients in uh, elbow joint uh, problems. But uh, as such, not in SI joint, so I thought of doing it in that. How much that. Uh, you have given PRP in SI joint? Sir, uh, it's oh. a range, sir. Um, ML. Drug, drug. Yes, Amount sir. Of drug. Yes, sir. Around, sir, maximum patients have received 2 to 2.5 ML of PRP. Whether 2 to 2.5 ML and go in SI joint? Sir, so it's a very tiny. No, sir, it is intra-articular, sir. So it's a prolotherapy, sir.
formally IFAP in 2015 is over. After this uh, lighting the lamp ceremony, it is uh, time to share feelings, stories behind in some uh, efforts, brainstorming uh, efforts of one year, how IFAP in 2015 has become a reality. My request to Dr. Bibu Kalani Das to come here and give us a little speech. Dr. Bibu Kalani Das, Chairperson, ICAPEN 2015. Good evening to all the delegates and dignitaries, our beloved Minister of Health and Minister of uh, uh, Judiciary, uh, Madam Chandrimam Bhattacharya, our respected Sir, Professor Swelin Bhattacharya, and all my friends from the Dr. Gita Joshi, Dr. Um, Murlidhar Joshi, and all of my friends here from Bangladesh, and I welcome all of you on behalf of the organizing committee to this very unique conference. The first one uh, of this is the recent advances in intervention pain management. It is unique because it is hosted by many societies like Bangladesh Society, like Indonesian Society, many of the members. It is not only one unit. So this is unique. Again, it is unique because I would like to say that any organization or any branch of science, medical science, is incomplete if it is not having any teaching, training, and research. In earlier days, when we started pain management, we were only having the pain treatment. But now, it has in involved everything. And this is, in this part of the country, I must congratulate Dr. Gautam Das, who is the pain physician, totally. It is, and he has trained many people in, in the country and also neighboring countries. And he is, this intervention pain management is being possible and people are trained by him only. And now we have many people who have uh, qualified in the fellowship and across the country they are training people. So I think I won't take much of your time. You have tested, they have framed a very good academic program and you have tested the yesterday's workshop. We had two workshops, very, um, uh, one, is, one was organized by uh, Dr. Paul here, sitting here in the medical super specialty, and another oh, in Ajikon Medical College by the Bosri Bhattacharya, the ultrasound guided one. I believe you all enjoyed that. And today's program also, it was very successful, and, uh, and the other two days will go like that. And I thank Madam Bhattacharya for all uh, her busy schedule she has taken the pain to come here and to encourage us and uh, sir with his this age and she's, he is so enthusiastic and he was uh, he was behind this uh, um, person a uh, pillar uh, Gautam's in initial phase I can remember one day we are going for the conference of orthopedics and sir told me uh, you, you are doing pain management. I have a boy who is very enthusiastic and he is very good and he is Gautam Das. So that day uh, he was behind Gautam and we organized the first conference here in his institute, BORC. So uh, with these few words, I hope that you will enjoy this and we will carry forward this type of uh, meetings 
uh, every year, if possible. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Vijay Das, Chairperson of ICOPEN 2015, for this welcome note. And another thanks for uh, reminding us one more unique side of this conference. We have scientific partners from different countries, Bangladesh, Indonesia. And uh, from the side of ICOPEN, I thank to all those organizations, medical specialties, and doctors. And ICOPEN will expect this association in future years as well. Now, may I request Dr. Gita Joshi, Chairperson, ICRAPEN 2015, to share a few words. Respected dignitaries on the dais and uh, <coughs> dignitaries sitting in the audience and our delegates and colleagues. It is a real matter of pleasure indeed to be chairperson of this very unique event, a, a pain conference focused on research in pain. As we know, there are many few areas of, uh, areas of research in pain uh, medicine, and Dr. Gautam Das took up this challenge and said that we must come out with basic research in pain. And this is how this uh, conference was conceived and now materialized. Any research needs uh, to be started, uh, at least in initial stage, it requires lots of efforts. And I will say this conference is the first step towards this very important aspect of any medical speciality. I welcome all the delegates over here and hope they are going to have a very good time, not only in learning and training and uh, educating themselves, but also enjoying the city of Kolkata. I'm really honored to be among the very uh, dignitaries uh, of these cities uh, like uh, Dr. Shailendra sir and uh, Madam and uh, Dr. Gautam Das and team. I take this opportunity to thank Dr. Gautam Das for uh, giving me this opportunity to chair the conference and congratulate the team, the entire team who has worked very hard throughout the year to make this uh, conference a very successful event. The only message I want to give to all pain physicians, however busy you may be in your uh, practice, devote some time, at least 20 to 30 percent of the time, towards the documentation, reporting, and coming out with some new innovations and new techniques, and uh, putting it on paper and coming out with research. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Thank you, Dr. Gita Joshi, for this uh, address. Now, may I request Dr. Malidha Joshi, Secretary, Indian Society for the Study of Pain, to come here and share his views. Take me to the dais, off the dais. Good evening, everyone. I bring greetings from Indian Society for Study of Pain gives me immense satisfaction to be here, one of my favorite cities, probably for not only for the scientific deliberations, but food and friends over here. And uh, it's not the first time that the Calcutta team has done something uh, great as the event today. It's for this was third or fourth event, what uh, the, uh, the team at Calcutta led by Gautam, and it's probably, I should say, the, the syndicate group. They do a fantastic job where every time you do come out with innovative ideas, especially the international conference on recent advances in pain, seems to be a different kind of sort compared to conventional conference. We know how much effort has gone in because almost one and a half year they have been sounding about the program and innovative ideas and the themes. A lot of thought has gone through that one and it would not have been possible unless it was a teamwork. I think everyone has chipped in and probably with each uh, passing event you seem to be challenging yourself and coming with a much better program than the previous one. And that's the only way to improve ourselves constantly. 
and hats off to the, the team which is behind the ICRA. And uh, we are happy to know that uh, this kind of event keep on happening in Calcutta. All the time, always we are with you. All the best for you. Thank you once again. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Dr. Joshi. Ladies and gentlemen, ICOPEN 2015 was organized in association with Indian Society for the Study of Pen. And ICOPEN thanks Dr. Joshi and other senior members of ISSP for this kind of association and expects this in future as well. Now, may I request Dr. Deva Pani, the General Secretary, Bangladesh Society for Anesthesiologists, to come here and share his views in short. Ladies and gentlemen, we have large number of participation from Bangladesh. Good evening, Namaskar. Uh, respected chief guest in the, this conference, John Dewey Bhattacharya, and the other respected guest, and like father, like orthopedician, is a very aged person in this, in this scenario. I think so that it's very important uh, conference for ours because uh, Kolkata is near to Dhaka, so many of the person can attend this conference. And for this region, uh, the Gautam Dash, so the Gautam Dash is the main factor to invite us, and most of the hours Bangladeshi are going to Gautam Dash. And many of the patients come for physician to make by two complaints. One is pain, and another is bleeding from any point. And all doctors claim that they all are pain physician and because all of the patient goes to the all phys, uh, patient goes to physician due to the their pain and they are from the village doctors to a specialist. But right things and right way treatment is essential for the management of pain. So the pain management not too easy and it is very difficult to arrange the pain management. Anesthesiology is the branch where the, some interventional technique for pain management by achieve a but good way. So for, the, for this region, when an anesthetist involved in the pain management, I think he, he is better to manage the pain than other physician because they know that every interventional pain management and with the interventional technique, always with there is a chance of any complication. And any complication can only managed by the anesthesiologist. I think for this region, anesthesiologist is the branch where the many subspeciality, I think the many of the younger physician comes to the anesthesiologist to and they can they are experienced in the many sites, especially anesthesiology, intensive care medicine, pain medicine, palliative care medicine, and other things. I thanks to Gautam Das and other person who invite me and to take uh, to give the chance for this of uh, scenario. Thank you again. Thank you, Dr. Monik. The idea of Ikra Pain has got support from across the globe. Ikra Pain 2015 has got participation from across the globe. And uh, after, even after that, I think all of you will agree that ICAPEN is a reality because of great labor from few physicians, pain physicians of the city, and among them, Dr. Abhijit Pal, treasurer ICAPEN 2015. May I request Dr. Pal to share his views? Good evening, Madam, Madam Bhattacharya, Sir, and all dignitaries on the dais, and all my colleagues who are sitting in the halls, our pain physicians, friends. It's very strange that, you know, after spending 15 years in hardcore cardiac anesthesia practice, uh, about three years back, I sort of decided to change my stream to pain medicine because of uh, two factors. Because when I I saw my sister-in-law who passed away in cancer, and I was very helpless because uh, I, being a cardiac anesthesiologist, a senior consultant who has done so many cases, I had uh, not much of idea of how to take care of uh, cancer pain. So that was my trigger into the journey of pain medicine. And uh, today I'm an integral part 
of a large group of pain physicians in Calcutta, very enthusiastic. Uh, Dr. Das has been my teacher. She is with us all the time to guide us. And when we first thought of having an international pain conference in Calcutta around a year, one and a half years back, so I felt that uh, I opened my doors from the hospitals to him for uh, all kinds of activity. So we already did two major workshops, this one recently being finished yesterday. And, uh, and it's a wonderful journey from there on. But any conference of this magnitude requires uh, man material and money. Material is available everywhere. Uh, man and money, both are very difficult because nobody gives time. And uh, I would even, I cannot blame myself also, I also can't give much of time. So, uh, whichever, all of us have put in a lot of effort and many people who are sitting over there and also on the stage, they have given up their practices, their crucial hours, and they have put in a lot of effort to uh, bring this conference and today as a reality what we see today. And uh, getting uh, sponsors to support this event is not an easy thing. A lot of expenses have gone in. So being a treasurer, so a bit of responsibility also fell on me. But I always kept on getting a lot of support from Dr. Das. So whenever I would sort of feel a little depressed or sit back, then he would always, you know, push me with enthusiasm. And because of that, we could make this thing happen today. Uh, with that, I welcome all of you to this uh, pain summit. And today is the first day, and we are having many more interesting events in the next following two days. And I wish you all a very enjoyable and happy event, and a very happy stay in Calcutta. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Paul. We invited you all uh, to witness this program on this dais. And the main object, of course, was inaugurating the ICAPN 2015 formally. But another great event is waiting to be happen on this dais, and that is the formal opening of Journal on Recent Advances in Pain. Before that, may I request Dr. Gautam Das, Editor-in-Chief, Journal on Recent Advances in Pain, to come here and share with us what was the object or the uh, other ideas behind this channel. Dr. Gautam Das, please. Good evening, everybody. So, what Professor Joshi was telling, that uh, we have a lot of clinicians, but uh, unfortunately, we don't have that much of publications from this region. Maybe there are so many reasons, but one reason might be the lack of support from different aspect. But another very important aspect is we need to push ourselves and our juniors that if we are spending a little bit of time from our busy practicing schedule, then we can have, at least we can share our experiences, whatever we are doing in our daily clinical practice, we can publish those things. And uh, being an editor of uh, Indian Journal of Pain, when I became the editor of Indra Journal of Pain uh, in 2012, that time I have seen the, the number of uh, the articles which we was receiving was not much. And then over the last few years, we have seen the tremendous increase of the, of the <coughs> journals and uh, articles, sorry. And uh, we are unable to publish all those articles. We felt that, okay, we should be having similar kind of more journal and uh, show that the young stars are getting motivated. We have a very important workshop also on uh, the publication. Still that publication is going on and that's why Shusha Hartnagar is not here. So important part is we should be knowing the tricks, how a manuscript can be accepted. Even a very good manuscript cannot be accepted if it is not grammatically correct. So grammatical correctness is very important to be accepted as journal. So that was a very important aspect. And uh, the main motto of this conference is to motivate the youngsters in publications. So the formal inauguration of this journal was one of the very important part. But before that, I'll be asking three very important persons, the 